Hey guys, so a um, friend of mine uh, recently did a uh, knife inventory video and it's been a while since I've updated mine, so a lot of the same stuff here, a little change every in a few of them, but um, it's this is a pretty good kit I have going here. Um, first up, it's a 180mm white number 2 Watanabe uh, Yanagiba small but it um you know for a yanagi and it's not his uh from his custom lines from like his mass produced ones but you know it's it's a real good one for um like tenderloin or anything like that you know also makes a really good nice little petty knife um next is a white number two i think they actually call this a deba don't quote me on that from uh japanese woodworker um i'd say it's really nice if you want to get like you know you know, messing around with, like, regrinding your own knives and such, because it's, it's, it's not real expensive, I think it's maybe, like, 60 bucks, probably even less when I bought it about seven years ago or so, but, I mean, for what it is, it's good, I thinned it out a little bit, and it, it performs a little bit better now. Alright, next is the Moritaka Honosuke Ayagami Super Steel. Um, really like this one for boning out chickens, I mean, I went through probably 40 pounds or so um, and I had to um, split the uh, backs and thighs and all that good stuff and this thing kept on coming back for seconds so that was a really good pickup. Uh, a couple of uh, bigger Yanagis this one's the um, Kirioka blue number two lefty. Um, this one actually came pretty sharp out of the box I was I was impressed by it, but the um, the uh, blade road in the portion right here it was really rough, like maybe four or five hundred grit, something like that, finish. So you know it wasn't really couldn't really use it for any real you know sashimi slicing or anything like that, have you? So you'd have you know I do uh, uh, take care of that, but I mean for. I think it was like maybe 200 or something like that for Lefty Yagi, and I didn't have to wait six months for it. I'm quite happy. Uh, another one from uh, this is a Geshin. I forget which one it was, but um, this is actually my first Yagi. It's a 270 white two. Um, actually, this one came with uh, the very first hand I had Tim Johnson do, uh, and Bologna copper spacer and a uh, I think bog wood um, ferrule I think but you know, this one like I say for 270 is a nice little starter starter off one because it you know lets you you know get things going and all that before you, you know, want to try and invest in all, like a 300 or a 330 or a 360 if you want to get nuts like that um, next is a uh, just a simple white number two mass produced usoba it's sold under probably three or four different names uh, had this one a good while. I mean, I basically learned how to sharpen on single bevels with this thing, not to what I can do nowadays, but I got it sharp, you know. As you can see, it's, you know, you can tell I've, it's not ruler flat anymore and such, but, I mean, for what it, for what it is and all that, it works. Um, this one I got off a trade, and... It's a Suji uh, 240, I think it's a Kramer, Bob Kramer's uh, S, whatever, stainless steel, I forget what they use here, but nice Damascus pattern, little, little, little blemishes right there, but um, it's nice, I mean, it gets sharp, stays sharp, you know, like most Sujis, it doesn't have a um, whole lot of height to it, as you can tell, this is... That's about as tall as it gets, you know. And granted, the handle, personally, I would say, could be a lot smaller, because you look at it, it's just that's like a it's a standard chef knife handle you schmuck onto a you know, height challenge knife. So, but the Damascus on it is real good. The heat treats real good. Stainless steel on it's real good. So, um, like I say, barring the handle, everything else worked out real good. Um, Konosuke White Number Two Laser Two Forty Sujihiki. Um, right now, um, we get a ton of mangoes in, and this is what I pretty much go to, to, uh, peel them and dice them up and all that good stuff, because it's thin and flexible, so, you know, you can get around that big old pit pretty easy. 
And this is an Isaiah Schroeder handle. I think it's Purple Heart and something else. I can't really remember what it was. Uh, next, Tajiro ITK bread knife. Pretty much everybody, you know, knows about these or you know, if you're in the knife thing. Um, the handle was done by Sean Fernandez. It's a um, snake wood. Oops. And pretty much he told me his last one ever. He was not a happy camper doing this handle, but it turned out really nice. Thank you, Sean, again for it. Uh, next is a 210, 215 really millimeter white number two uh, Masakagi Yuki. Um, really good, like you know, middle weight knife. You know, you know, it's it's. I would say it's, it's slightly more towards the workhorse side. Is this how the the grind of it is? It's you know, relatively flat, and you know, you can you know mess with it a little bit, and you know, confixing the edge right here a little bit if you, you know, want to try that. I do like that it has the um, really big pinch grip here. You know, some knives there's not like you know, not a lot of room to really get a nice secure grip on it. But this one I really like. Uh, the handle is a standard oval handle, nothing super special about that. But yeah, I mean it's a good, like I said, that's a really good knife, and it's stainless steel jacketed, so you don't have to worry about patining just the edge, which is really nice. Um, this one is the I think it's a probably gonna butcher this one a little bit, but Tamakura I think R2 um, powdered stainless. Um, this is a laser. I mean, this is if you're, if you're a speed junkie like I am, this is going to be your, you know, if you want a nice stainless knife in the and again, it's like a 215, but this is a nice, really good go-to knife. I say it's really nice and thin behind the edge, and it actually holds its not holds its edge for a really, really long time. Which you know, you know, if you're in the professional kitchen, you know, you'll you'll like that. You won't have to touch up nearly as much. Um, this one is, I got off a trade, it's a Honyaki V2. So, from what I've read and talked about uh, people and such, it's really similar to white number two. Um, you can see the Hamon line. It, it's a budget Honyaki. This isn't like my Konosuke 270, you know, by any means. But it's still it's still pretty good. Um, it's really lightweight, which is, you know, really good. Um... I forget the I forget the ma uh, maker of this. I think it's uh, I think Japanese na uh, natural stones used to um, sell them a while back. Um, it's a flat ground, you know, so it's not going to be you know super nonstick and such. I would say in I think Hiromoto or something like that or another company manufactures a Honyaki budget friendly one. Which, if you really want to get into using, you know, want to get into one without spending, you know, a thousand dollars plus, I would say go out and pick up one. You know, I don't think these are any more made. Don't, don't quote me on this, but I don't think they are. Uh, next, I got another trade. It was a um, 240 millimeter white number one uh, Teriyasu Fujiwara Gyoro with a. Uh, this one actually came with a uh, ebony handle. Which was a nice upgrade. This actually one is actually pretty tall. I think it's like 53 millimeters. And I used a, a friend of mine once. His is oh, I'm probably about that much shorter from here up. So it's probably like you know 47 maybe his was. But I mean his his are Fujiwara's knife has always been kind of weird to me in, in, in a little bit. Not a bad way, but you know when you first hold them, the other. They got some heft to them, you know, stainless steel jacket again, you know, so you don't really have to worry about the any rust issues. Um, but it's it's got heft. And I won't say a bad way either. It's more of like, you know, it puts it right there where you're comfortable, right on your pinch grip where you're, you know, it's really comfortable. You know, the grind on it is immaculate. You know, you can, you can really tell a difference between, you know, an okay... Smith, who does okay grind work, and one who does exceptional ground work. This guy does very, very good grind work. You know, it's really non-stick for potatoes. You won't, really won't stick. And just, like I say, it's it's it's, me, it's a medium weight, but the grind on almost makes it cut like a laser, and that's really nice to thin behind the edge. 
So yeah, that was a really good pickup. And last one I actually had to wait on a little bit to get back from the Smith who originally made this. Um, this is Pierre Rodrigue's 240mm uh, beta knife. Uh, I did a video of it, me using it about two and a half years ago. Um, it, it's if you work in a pro kitchen, this steel will take the beat and keep on ticking. I've fully sharpened it one time since I got it back maybe four months ago, five months ago or so, um, and I just strop it on a like a six thousand stone four or five times or so, and it's pretty much back to you know, 85-90% and that's how it's pretty much stayed. The handle is African Blackwood. Uh, this, uh, nickel silver spacer right there. Uh, dyed mammal tooth, another spacer, and I think that's D10. Um, I would like to tell you what the steel is, but you know, Pierre had asked me not to, you know, really ask unless you, you know, you want to email him and you know and try and talk to him. I am in talks with him doing another one. But his waiting list is kind of long, so which is fine. Um, he did dye the um, blade in fenny chloride, I think it is, to pretty much what he jokingly called it a thousand-year-old patina, which I like. I like the look of it. You know, I, I don't. You know, mirror polish for me has always been, you know, okay if it is, but if not, yeah. But you can actually tell how hard the steel is because I think he said it came out of the quench tank at like 68 and 69 or so, and he backed it down to like 66, 65 and a half. He usually does all of his uh, polishing blade work to like uh, 500 uh, uh, grit belt finish, but you can see the real fine lines of all the uh, of the coarser belts on here. It doesn't really, it doesn't. I haven't noticed it really affect any non stickage and all that because it, it it'll go through potatoes like nobody's business. But yep, yeah, that's my uh, kit. So thanks again.